just entered our solar system. Take a look at this. This is right up your alley. Spooky science just in time for Halloween. Scientists at NASA pointing their telescopes at a mystery rock. It could be the first observable object from outside our solar system. And NASA's not quite sure what it is. Experts say it's less than a quarter mile in diameter and is traveling at more than 15 miles per second. The strange behavior of this object doesn't match any typical orbit, making NASA think it's not local. Now, so far, reports are saying that they don't know exactly what it is. It could be a comet, it could be a space rock, or something entirely different. And we just don't know. And this is the real reason why I want to point this story out is because the way NASA and the way these scientists, academia, and the mainstream media like to report about space is as if they know it all. As if they know a timeline when we're going to get hit by an asteroid or we're going to get hit by a comet when they don't know a damn thing. It wasn't too long ago when I was sitting in school where they were saying Pluto was a planet. Right? And then all of a sudden, now all oh, Pluto is in a planet. Look, there are so many unidentified objects. There are so many things about space, about our own solar system that we just do not know. And they don't deliver the message that way. They want to always make you feel safe, make you feel secure. And if something is going to happen, they're never going to tell you because so, the elites are going to want to get away in their little freaking bunkers. But we do know, even a few years ago, when a space rock came into our atmosphere and exploded over Russia and it caused severe damage, that was undetected. So there is no timeline. There is no certainty. And that's why I don't really discount anything, even things like Planet X, because we don't know what's out there. We don't know what's in our space. So they're saying... Like this mystery object is the first intergalactic rock to come into our solar system and now they can examine it and so they're so excited. We don't know if there's a planet that literally orbits outside of our solar system and comes back in. We just don't know. And this is a huge point because we don't even know about our own ocean. We barely know about our own oceans. We, we don't even know about the migration tracks of great white sharks, let alone knowing everything that's happening in our own solar system, in our own orbit, or just space in general. And then you see things like CERN, which is, you know, the facility that's located in Switzerland that houses the largest particle accelerator, right? And basically what they've been doing there, they're trying to recreate the Big Bang. They've been trying to recreate how the universe was created because the way these scientists think that there is no God, so, I mean, that's right there. I mean, that's evil. They think there is no God, and any answer, they can figure it out. So, if God can do it, they can do it. So, they, they, they see themselves as godlike. And that's why they even call the Higgs boson the God particle, which is basically the particle that creates the entire energy field throughout the uh, universe, as they say. And just think about CERN for a second, which, again, I mean, it's just a remarkable machinery that is in this facility, but it's beyond that because, again, they see themselves as godlike. I mean, we remember seeing even video footage of this where they were doing this ritual in front of a, uh, a statue of Shiva that they implemented in front of the facility. They were doing a ritual in front of it, and this dancing Shiva is supposed to symbolize cosmic creation. So, again, they view themselves godlike. And this is a point that I'm trying to make, just like how, oh, this unidentified mystery object just entered our solar system. But the scientists, the media, you know, the New World Order are anti-God. They don't believe in it. And atheism is on the rise. And they think they can define everything and that humanity is reign supreme over the universe. And that's how they see themselves. And this is why I question everything. Because everything deserves to be questioned. For God's sakes, they want to tell us that our own atmosphere with global warming, they can detect when the world is going to end. Look, they can't even detect exactly where a hurricane is going to go, let alone global warming, which is going to destroy the earth. And I know because I live in Florida and I'm hit with hurricanes all the time. They want to act as if they know where everything is, that they have a timeline on everything, that they can predict everything, that they can recreate the universe, that they can recreate God. And that is a lie. And that's a big problem in our academic community. Mainstream media with scientists, brainwashing generation after generation. God knows what they're going to create through this at CERN. I mean, this might sound crazy or ridiculous, but there was even reports that, oops, we might have opened up a parallel universe and let some stuff in at CERN because they are smashing. I mean, the power 
the power because they're trying to recreate God, right? So they are smashing these particles together. They don't Look, they're smart, of course, obviously, these scientists and physicists that are there. But when you take God out of the equation, you risk ourselves. I mean, you're risking humanity. When you think you know it all, right, it's going to come to a point where, oops, we didn't know it all. And a lot of things can happen. Bad things can happen. Evil things can happen when you remove God from the equation. And that's just my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Chad. This is AMTV. Hard hitting and in your face. I'll be back soon. You've not seen anything yet. But they sit there and they tell you none of this is going on. None of this is happening. Major tech companies admit they're watching and listening to you at your house. We told people that 15 years ago with the patents, with the press releases from Google to their shareholders, and people didn't believe it. 9-11 has provided a license for European countries, for United States, Australia, Canada, South Africa, and others to develop spying systems that affect all of us. So who here has an iPhone? Who here has a Blackberry? Who here uses Gmail? Well, you're all screwed. <laughs> the reality is intelligence contractors are selling right now to countries across the world mass surveillance systems for all those products. After 9-11, the Bush administration asked the NSA to take a bigger role in counterterrorism. First, they started tracking calls to and from any nation with suspected terrorists, and then they moved on to emails and internet metadata. From there, they started working with phone and tech companies to get direct access to their servers for limited surveillance and searches, but shortly after, they pretty much gave up the formalities and started taking all the data they could from these companies. Now they're monitoring 193 other nations worldwide, as well as millions of U.S. citizens, all in the name of keeping us safe. And that we're doing this strictly for one purpose, and that one purpose is to catch terrorists. And what it turns out to be is uh, uh, for a more purient uh, reason. All tech put out by globalists is designed for something totally different than what they tell you it's for. Would the NSA lie? Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. WikiLeaks released what it claims are thousands of confidential CIA documents. They allegedly show that the spy agency worked to develop tools to hack into devices like Apple and Android smartphones, Samsung TVs, and vehicle control systems. Now it's like, okay, yeah, my TV's watching me, big deal. Public statements by Petraeus, now the head of the CIA, that they are watching everybody through their appliances without warrants and they'll do whatever they want. New revelations about the federal government's spying on our phone lines. All of the new washing machines, dryers, computers, iPhones, have cameras that are two-way, have audio that's two-way, and they admit they're tracking you. How much technology is too much? You go get a new smart TV, and it, when you fire it up, it says read the contract or click here. You go read, there's 20, 30, 40 pages of contract, depending on the TV, and it says right there, we will share audio and video of what's going on in your house with third parties. And we were the first. Meanwhile, CNN comes out and says, your TV may be watching you decades after I told you. And that's what I'm getting at here is, this isn't about liberal or conservative. Here's the problem is they'll tell you they're protecting us. They have privacy controls in place. But I've got a news flash for you. Sometimes the government doesn't tell the truth. These mega corporations allied with government are engineering into all major appliances globally. You pay for it in the product. It costs more, but every product has it, so it's a hidden tax, so they can surveil you. Edward Snowden's lawbreaking revealed that the NSA keeps a record of most every phone call Americans make. Learning that makes lots of people mad. 
get a specific warrant based on probable cause or stay out of our lives. What you do on your cell phone is none of their damn business. Senator Rand Paul has sued the government for collecting those phone logs without getting warrants for each person. I think there is a Fourth Amendment protection to your records. The Fourth Amendment. I fear the time when maybe someone in government becomes not so well-intentioned. They're so busy tapping our phones, they don't pay attention to what they ought to pay attention Fact to. Is. Uh, one of my coworkers went to a supervisor and said, uh, but sir, these are, these are personal calls. Uh, the supervisor said my orders were to transcribe everything. Willing Americans embrace gadgets used to spy on them. CIA head, we will spy on Americans through electrical appliances. What came out four years ago? That Intel and others have secret NSA contracts and are putting the capacitor chips in all the computers. If the reports about the NSA's programs aren't being exaggerated, then our national security agency is the closest thing to Big Brother the world has ever seen. Again, people know this is Big Brother, so they have a tendency to say, oh, this isn't happening. But everyone I know the last few years this is happening to, where it knows what's going on in your house, where it knows what you're saying, and then they admit they're doing it, but still people can't believe it, Joe. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. I mean, uh, usually I can understand if you're typing it in, and you know you're you're searching on the web or whatever. It's, yeah, they admit you know, cookies analytic. are doing that. Yeah, but I had not searched car batteries today. Didn't search anything like that. Just mentioned today to CJ and the guys that uh, I had to ride my bike in because the battery in my car died. And then when I searched the weather to see what I'm going to ride home in, a uh, car battery ad comes up. Six percent off car batteries. Need a battery? It's just kind of weird. I remember being told 13 years ago by an engineer, 14 years ago, that it didn't matter if computers weren't hooked to the Internet, that all computers that had been made in the last decade or so, so this is, I guess, 20 years. He was telling me 13, 14 years ago that in the last decade, so that'd be 20 years back or more, they all had transponder chips, capacitor chips in the chips, that could be remotely powered so that then the government could download the encrypted data off of it and compress it. Now that nearly all of us are online, connected or digital in some way, spies are no longer watching just one or two bad guys. Instead, the UK and US governments are both collecting massive amounts of information from the things we do on our phones and over the internet. Because it's not straight technology we're being given to enhance our lives and our safety. It's being given to us so that when the globalists take over, no one can stand against them because everything, our way of life, is destroyed. There's no self-sufficiency, and all tech is there as a prison to control us. This is the admitted technocrat New World Order takeover program in their own words. Governments in America and the UK argue that these surveillance programs help keep us safe from terrorism. But what happens if you're wrongly accused? Now that you know you're being watched, how does that change your behavior, how you talk to your friends, and how much you trust the world around you? These revelations have changed the internet for us forever. Does privacy have a future online at all? And should we just accept that the internet is now a different place, run by businesses and governments who can monitor it how they like? The NSA shit, I'm, I'm just trying to dwell on that as little as possible because it's so negative and it feels so helpless. And it's just such a weird thing, the idea that we're like about to relinquish all of our privacy to other individuals that are no different than you or I. The, the idea that, you know, you're going to protect all these people from dying because you're going to stop terrorist activity and the way to do that is to remove all freedom. You start, you go, okay, what is happy about this life? If this life is living scared and living where you're being watched every step well, always, of the way always by ask random yourself, people, well, that's they it. definitely can. They could, they, they could alter your emails. They could do whatever they that's want. That's why nobody gets whacked anymore. People used to get whacked. You don't get whacked anymore. And and the killed? Pub, yeah, you don't. Well, they think that Seth Rich guy got killed. Snowden says he was astonished back then at the access he had at his fingertips. 
most notably including a computer program that, as he put it, could get inside your thought process. When I think about an instance that, that really just struck me as, oh my God, we can do this, and that we can do it to anyone, was that people at NSA, analysts, can actually watch people's internet communications, watch them draft correspondence, and actually watch their thoughts form as they type. As you write a message, you know, an analyst at the NSA or any other service out there that's using this kind of attack against people can actually see you write sentences in the backspace over your mistakes and then change the words and then kind of pause and, and, and think about what you wanted to say and then change it. And it's this extraordinary intrusion, not just into your communications, your finished messages, but your actual drafting process into the way you think.